Once you have the plugins in place, you can start Adobe After Effects. In the file menu, notice the entry labeled Open Compositor Link Autodesk. This option would not have appeared had you not copied the three plugin files to their needed locations. Use this tool to open the Compositor Link Settings dialog. It displays very much the same way it did in 3ds Max. Click the Create Link button to browse and select the .sof file you saved to disk earlier. Close the link floater when done. You can always open it later if you need to. Various files appear in the bin, including an Autodesk Link composition. Double-click the composition entry in the bin to see the layers it's made of. You can also see the visual result in the workspace. Scrub the animation to see that the sequence was rendered as you set it up in 3ds Max from the camera viewpoint. More on that later. Apart from the last two entries, a camera and a solid, the rest of the layers are ordered the same way you had set them up in 3ds Max. The blending modes have also been preserved. Notice for example how the AO layers are set to multiply mode. You will get to work more on this in a moment. For the time being, hide all layers except the vault layer. Notice that it's much darker than it showed when you were test rendering the scene in 3ds Max. This gamma discrepancy happens sometimes and can have various reasons. Sometimes it's the gamma setup in 3ds Max, the chosen renderer, the output file type, etc. etc. This type of problem is more likely to happen with low dynamic range file types than with HDR file types. However, it is easy to fix, especially in post. All you need to do is apply a color corrector in the shape of an exposure filter. Change the gamma correction value from 1 to 2.2 and notice the difference. You will need to repeat this process on other layers as well, especially the beauty pass layers. Black and white layers such as matte passes and ambient occlusion passes are less likely to be a problem. Again, make sure all layers are hidden except for the vault layer. Now, unhide the vault AO layer. Notice the difference an ambient occlusion pass has on the scene. It gives it more depth and make it look far more interesting. If the ambient occlusion effect is very dark, you can adjust the gamma correction as you did earlier, or you can simply reduce the opacity of the layer. Make sure you are at the beginning of the animation and expand the Vault AO layer. Expand the Transform track. Notice the Opacity track. It is set to Animatable mode, as seen by the little clock icon. If you are not planning to animate a track, as is the case here, you can turn this mode off. Adjust the opacity value until you get an effect you like. A value of 75% should be fine, but feel free to experiment. Collapse the layer when you're done. Next, you take a look at the self-illumination pass. If you recall, that was for the benefit of glowing the computer screens and the ceiling lights. However, the vault self-illumination layer currently has no effect on the scene. This is because of a couple of factors. First, it needs a different blending mode, and second, and more importantly, it needs to sit on top of the beauty pass. You could have rewired that information when you were working in 3ds Max, but it is infinitely easier to use a simple click and drag in After Effects. Place this layer between the beauty pass and the AO pass. Make sure the layer is enabled, and notice that it hides the beauty pass completely. When the blending mode is set to normal, the color information is taken into account and one layer hides another underneath it. Change the self-illumination blending mode from normal to color dodge. This is typically used for glow effects. Toggle it on and off to see the effect. You can actually duplicate this layer for a cumulative effect or you can apply a glow filter to it. Make sure the layer is selected and choose Effect, Stylize, Glow. Bring the threshold value down from 60% to about 10. Again, toggle the visibility of the layer to see the end results. Next, you work on the security door. Unhide that layer. 
The glazing is almost fully transparent, but you just now realize that it's not to your liking. Let's say you decide to have the glazing more opaque. Instead of adjusting the material's opacity in 3ds Max and re-rendering the sequence, you will instead use the matte pass you foresaw might be handy. Place the matte pass layer on top of the door layer and unhide it. It is already somewhat transparent because you already reduced its opacity value in the compositor view in 3ds Max. In normal blending mode and with an opacity value of 100%, it hides the rest of the scene. Set it to screen mode instead. This way only the white areas of the layer affect the scene. As the white areas represent the glass, you will be able to adjust the glazing transparency that way. Adjust the opacity to your liking. A value of about 20% should work well. Remember to disable animate mode unless you're planning to animate that effect. Enable the Arm Beauty Pass. This layer contains color and shadow information. If you recall, you set up shadows to be cast on invisible objects courtesy of the matte shadow material in 3ds Max. In a perfect situation, you would probably separate that layer as well, but it should work fine for our needs here. Finally, enable the Arm Door AO Pass to add more depth to the foreground. As you did with the vault, you may want to reduce the opacity for that layer. The scene is coming together, but one last component remains to be studied, the solid used as a placeholder for a security screen. This is what you will do in the next movie.